Hey everybody, welcome back to Everyday Barbecue. My name is Mike, I wanna welcome you back to the channel. Sorry I skipped a week on you there for video. I had some things I'd forgotten about with the 4th of July and my birthday, so couldn't get a video done last week. And I went live to let people know, but I don't think everybody watched that live stream. So anyway, uh, hey, today I'm doing a simple video for you. I wanted to be able to do a video, but do something kind of fast. And I've been using this product for a while from Adrenaline Barbecue Company called the Slow and Sear. I got this product many months ago. David over there, my friend, sent that out to me to test out and check it out. I've used it probably a dozen times, and I'm gonna tell you what, it has really stepped up my barbecue game. Had it in a video I did with David about a month and a half ago with some ribeye steaks. We did the cold great method sear. That video was awesome, those steaks were awesome, and the slow and sear performed well in that video like it has with every other cook that I've ever done on it. So what makes this product good and unique? Well, it's the ease of use. It's the worry-free use that you have when you use it. It's the ability to have more efficient coal burning, to regulate temperatures easier, and I'd say most of all, it gives me that carefree charcoal cook that I'm looking for. Now, I'm just an everyday guy. I say this in all my videos. I'm not a charcoal expert. When I cook with coals before I had the slow and sear, I was always worried about flare-ups. And yeah, there's the two-zone cooking and you can set it up lots of different ways. There's all these methods you can find on YouTube. The bottom line is this makes it easy and fast and carefree and you just don't have to worry about your food when you put it on there. Plus it provides a sear that's just absolutely outstanding. With the slow and sear having the coals so high up to the grates, it gives you that caveman type sear without actually putting the meat on the coals. So anyway, this product has a lot of features and benefits. I'm not gonna talk about the company's claims. I'm just gonna kinda go through this with you on the video and let you know some of the differences that I've noticed, which I've already addressed, I think probably most of them. Today, we're gonna do a simple cook. It's gonna be hamburgers, it's gonna be hot dogs, nothing real special, but I just wanna show you how easy this can be to use. If you just wanna do a simple cook and you're looking for that charcoal flavor, this makes it easy and it makes it carefree like I've said. So let's go ahead and get started with this cook. Now for this cook, I've just chosen some Nathan's hot dogs. Around here in the house, we're either gonna use Nathan's or Vienna. Today we went with Nathan's, they were on sale at the grocery store. And I've just got some nice ground chuck patties here, which we're just gonna go ahead and season with some salt and some black pepper. All right, our kettle should be just about up to temperature. So let's go ahead and get outside, get this camera set up out there, and I'm just gonna walk you guys through this cook and show you how easy it is. At the end, of course, we're gonna build a nice burger and a nice hot dog for you guys. But let's go outside and enjoy this cook first, okay? Come on outside with me. All right, everything's ready to go. Now we are just gonna put these burgers on indirect here. Now, as I mentioned, one of the things I love about this is the carefree nature in which you can use it, and also the very even heating that we're gonna see. Now, what I've noticed from using this is that even though we've got these burgers here towards the back, further away from the heat, because of the way the slow and sear appears to work, and again, this is just me saying it, rarely do I see temperature differences when I start taking temperatures between meat that's on the back or meat that's closer to, because of the way the heat's rising and sort of causing a convection in here. So, we've got a total of eight burgers. I put six on now. We're gonna put those other two on in just a little bit, and that's just gonna be for somebody who maybe doesn't want their burger done quite as much like me. So, let's go ahead, get this covered up. We'll check on it in maybe 15 minutes. And my favorite part now is that I can literally just chill out and not have to worry about anything that's going on in this kettle. I can sit on the porch, I can go inside, sit on the couch, I can do anything I want. I don't have to worry about flare-ups, I don't have to worry about anything like that. It's changed my game, it's encouraged me to cook more on charcoal, so I absolutely love it. I'll see you guys back in a snap with an update. All right, we are back. And you can see it's been about 15 minutes. Those burgers have some beautiful clean smoke color to them. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get these other two burger patties on. All right, so now that I've arranged these and gotten those other two burgers on, it's time to go ahead and get these hot dogs on here. And we are just gonna let these roll nice and slow. All right, hot dogs are on. Gonna let everything go nice and slow. And we're gonna check on this in just a bit. All right, 
it's been about another 10, maybe 15 minutes. I don't know, I was just inside hanging out and these burgers are ready for a nice little sear. The hot dogs are nice and plumped up, but they're not broken open. We're not gonna sear those. We're just gonna put a little bit of a sear on these burgers. So we're just gonna kind of flip these over. And we don't need much. And we don't want them to get deformed or anything like that. We just kind of want to finish them off right there. I'm going to give those just a few seconds. All right, so it's been maybe 30 seconds or so. I'm going to give them a quick flip. All right, and that's just like everybody else in the house kind of likes their burgers right there. So we are going to get those ready for some cheese. And I'm gonna go ahead and take care of these other two really fast. All right, those have been about 30 seconds or so. A quick flip. All right, it's been about another 30 seconds. Now we are gonna move these here and get these ready for some cheese. All right, so each one of these is gonna get a nice slice of American. We're keeping this real simple. And finally, for these last two, for my little girl and I, we kind of like ours more of a medium. All right, now we are gonna close this lid for about a minute, and then we are gonna be able to pull this stuff off. All right, that cheese has melted down just perfectly. It's been literally just about a minute, almost on the button. So it's time to go ahead, and pull these burgers off. Finally, for mine and my little girls, like I said, we like ours more medium. And I think I nailed that. I really didn't take temps on those. I kind of just did those by feel. All right, let's get these hot dogs off. These are just cooked perfectly. All right, now when I'm done cooking on the slow and sear, typically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna choke down those vents on the bottom, put that lid on, choke that out too. It goes out shortly after and then we've got some coals for our next cook. So anyway, let's get this food inside. Let's build a burger, let's build a hot dog, and let's taste this stuff. All right, everybody, so I showed you some pictures of what this turned out like. Really good, smells absolutely beautiful. Now let's go ahead and build ourselves a burger and a dog. So I'm gonna build mine here for you. So we're gonna start with my burger patty. And to this, I've got some nice thinly sliced onion got a nice piece of tomato here. All right, now just to keep this easy, we're just gonna go with a little bit of ketchup and a little bit of mustard. So let's go ahead and crown that bad boy right there. Now let's build our hot dog. So we got a nice, perfectly plump hot dog there. Let's get some tomato on here. Now I've got some very thinly chopped onion go with a little bit more of that onion. And of course, you know I'm going Chicago style. We've got our nice Vienna bright green relish. Now for our sport peppers. We've got our pickle here. I'm gonna rock some celery salt. Now let's get a little bit of mustard on there. Looks good to me. So let's go ahead and cut this burger in half. So you can see we hit exactly what we're looking for here. All right, let's give this stuff a taste. All right, guys, hot dog first. Cheers. Okay, so to be perfectly honest, that was my second bite of that hot dog because I didn't have my audio plugged in for the first taste test. So I'm doing it again so that I can provide you with a good video here. Um, and it was good both the first and second time around. I really loved it as always. Classic Chicago hot dog flavor. Only we got a little bit of smokiness in that hot dog from being out on the coals. So it's just beautiful. You gotta try it if you haven't, all right? Check it out. All right, now let's get on to this burger. There's our burger. Let's give it a try.
just like Todd Tovin says. Cheers. All right, so that was not meant to make fun of Todd Tovin. I actually love Todd Tovin. He inspired me to get a Blackstone griddle. So anyway, that's another video. So this food turned out great. I'm telling you right now that Slow and Sear has stepped up my charcoal game. I know I'm gonna have a lot of people chiming in here telling me about, you know, well, you can do it this way and that way. I get all that, I know you can, okay? But this makes it a lot easier and a lot faster for a guy like me who's not a charcoal pro. Now I knocked that food out of the park real easy just by following the instructions, doing what I've always done. It was no worries, no fuss, no muss. I produced great food with that charcoal flavor. I didn't have to worry about flare-ups or anything like that, and I got a great sear at the end. I don't just share anything. I share stuff that I know I like, that I believe in, that I feel will be useful for my audience. And it won't be for everyone, but some of you may like and appreciate it. If you're interested in a slow and sear, I'm gonna have some links down below. You can check it out. If not, no big deal, whatever. But I wanted to share it with you. It's a product I've been using for months. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching, like always. Thank you very much. If you haven't subscribed already, please go ahead and do so. If you like what you see here today, there'll be lots more videos to come. Hopefully you'll get another one next week. Till next time, take care. I'll see you on the next episode.